So this is a golden period for women's cricket. And of course, the T20 World Cup is starting. And before the tournament starts, we have a legendary player with us. And she she doesn't need any introduction. New Zealand captain and absolute legend, Sophie Devine. Sophie, first of all, welcome to Red Sports. And thank you so much for taking time out for this. Thank you for having me. It's um, a yeah, pleasure to be here. Absolutely. And and uh, Sophie, my first question. So, as I started this uh, this interview by saying this is the golden period for women's cricket, do you think it is the best phase in women's cricket? Of course, plenty of bilateral series, domestic tournaments, franchise tournaments, uh, inaugural Under-19 Women's World Cup, the Senior T20 World Cup is coming and then the Women's Premier League as well. So, do you think it is the best phase for women's cricket? Yeah, well, I certainly think it, it's right up there. I think it, it, every period is unique though and I think you know, we wouldn't be where we are today without the women that have gone before us um, and have certainly laid the platform for, as you say, the golden period that we find ourselves in now. It's certainly taken off over the last sort of five or six years and, and I feel really privileged to be a part of, of, I guess, this time in women's cricket. Absolutely. And coming to the T20 World Cup, of course, it's a few days away. Uh, so, how do you see your preparation there? And do you think the, the conditions in South Africa will suit your players that are in the squad? Oh, look, I certainly think so. I think we're, we're really fortunate in terms of the timing of this World Cup that we've come off the back of our own domestic season back in New Zealand. So we're certainly match ready. I think for us, again, we've been really fortunate that we're in South Africa at the moment. We've got plenty of warm-up games to get used to the conditions, which I think is going to hold us in, in really good stead when the tournament starts. So I think it is. We, we've, we've prepared really well. Um, you certainly can't say that we're not, we don't have enough match practice under our belt because all of us have played plenty of cricket. So... I think for us, it's just about adapting and adjusting. Um, I think the team that can do that the best in this tournament generally is the one that goes sort of really deep into it. And, and how's your foot uh, doing now? I mean, the stress fracture. And is it sort of a bummer uh, ahead of such a crucial tournament? Well, look, it's certainly not ideal timing, um, but that's injuries and that's part of sport. So for me, I've been really well managed with our support staff here and certainly things are, are on track. So um, I just feel really lucky that We've just got such a great team around us. So, um, you know, we've got some good depth within the, the team as well. So for me to be able to sit back and, and watch our, our girls do what they need to do in these warm-up matches, it, it certainly gives me a lot of confidence. Absolutely. And uh, Sophie, you made your uh, international debut back in 2006. And uh, what do you think has, has changed in women's cricket ecosystem in these last 16, 17 years? A lot of time, almost two decades. <laughs> yeah, it is a lot of time. Thanks for reminding me about how old I am. Um, Oh, look, a lot has changed. I think about back when I debuted, you know, even the grounds that we played at, um, you know, the facilities that were available were generally sort of, you know, sort of out in the regions. No one really knew that we were playing. Um, the wickets that we played in were generally not the greatest. Um, and, and I think certainly the last couple of years, we've seen a real improvement in terms of the facility. The grounds were obviously playing a lot of the men's venues and with that we get better wickets and I think you're seeing a real increase in, in runs being scored. Tag that into I guess the professionalism of the game and, and women being able to spend more time on their craft not only I guess with bat and ball but also the fitness outside of it as well and we're seeing a lot of you know really athletic athletes um, playing the game. We're seeing you know the ball being hit further, we're seeing faster bowlers, we're seeing players in the outfield being able to dive throw, um, which makes a real spectacle. So I think it's been, yeah, a real shift over, as you say, a couple of decades of cricket. Yep. And, and if, I, if I recall some of the names from the starting uh, starting days, your name, Deandra Dotting, Elisa and Millie, these are the names that are coming to my mind when it comes to pure power hitting. But nowadays, you see a youngster, a 17, 18, 19-year-old youngster and coming and easy, easily clearing the field. Do you feel astonished by seeing the kind of power they are generating at such a tender age? Oh, look, I'm, yeah, I'm really excited by it. I think it's been incredible to see, you know, I think about Shafali Verma has certainly been at the forefront of that in terms of the way that she's been able to come onto the international scene and clear the rope with her power and I think about Alice Capsey as well, you know, you mentioned some of the, the older players, more experienced players. Deandra Dodden has always been one of the most explosive players ever to play the mm -hmm. game. And it's, you know, it's sad that she won't be at this tournament having retired. But, you know, I think it is. It just shows the development of the women's game to see that so many players now can clear the rope. And if we're honest, that's what the crowd wants to see. That's what the fans want to see is, is an entertainment and plenty of runs being scored. So it is. It's really exciting for me to to sit back and, and see how many players are able to achieve that now. 
Absolutely, and and uh, Sophie, I mean, uh, New Zealand team they are currently going some uh, sort of a transition phase. There are experienced players, but we have seen there are some, uh, plenty of young faces in that squad as well. But do you think this this is the time when New Zealand can go all the way and and you know break that boundary two time finalist? But is this the right phase for New Zealand cricket to go and uh, and achieve that trophy ambition? Oh, I certainly think so. I think we've always had the talent. It's about putting it together at, at world events, and, and we've been really disappointed with. I guess our track record over the last couple of tournaments and you know um, I think for us we're, we're building really nicely as I mentioned earlier I think our preparation has been outstanding I think we've got real clarity around how we want to play obviously with Ben coming into the group last year I think he's provided great direction for us and, and I think we're starting to see now that come to fruition which is really exciting and, and as you mentioned we've got a really good mix of some of our older experienced players are Susie Bates, Maddie Green even Mealy Kerr, I know she's only, you know, still young, but she's been around the international scene for a long time now. And you throw in the likes of your friend Jonas Eden Carson, Molly Penfold, I think it, you know, I think it's really important for all all teams, not just us here in New Zealand, um, that you get that mix and that balance right. Absolutely. Again, uh, one question, but this time I'm not reminding you of your age. But seven World Cups. Uh, but and and personally, do you think you are at the best phase where you can guide a team uh, to a trophy? Oh, I certainly hope so. Uh, I think um, I've been really fortunate to have played, as you mentioned, in, in plenty of tournaments. And, and for me, um, I think with that leadership role, I'm just so fortunate that I've got players like Susie Bates, who's you know played alongside me for a long, long time now. And, and we've got such a strong core of players that have been able to experience a lot of these sort of tournaments, which is going to help that younger group who are just starting off in their cricketing journey. So, yeah, mm. I certainly hope that we can use our experience um, to our advantage. And, and uh, coming to the women's IPL, we saw the, the, the franchise announcement. I mean, $570 million for five teams. That's that's crazy money. But uh, what's the buzz in the New Zealand camp? Have you guys been talking about uh, how the auction is going to be or, or what the developments are happening in the, in the women's uh, Premier League sector? Oh, I think you need to be living under a rock to not know what's going on uh, in the women's cricket uh -huh. and the women's Premier League. And I just think it's so exciting again. It has been the next step that everyone's been waiting for um, and certainly really excited by, I guess, the investment that's been, you know, has been put into the into that competition. And it is, it, it's going to be an absolute game changer. I know a lot of people have said that, but it genuinely is, I think. Um, it's sort of the next frontier for women's cricket is breaking mm -hmm. into India. We all know playing against India, we know the talent that they've got. And, and hopefully this, you know, not only brings them up, but it also brings everyone else up around them too. And, and uh, you know, uh, I have seen plenty of Indian domestic players who haven't played India yet, but they have become overnight millionaires during IPL auctions and their life have completely changed. And financially, you have to be secured. We are, you are playing professional cricket to be financially secured ultimately. So, do you think that assurance of, of money uh, will, will also mo help motivate the younger players to, you know, play better cricket and be better at what you are doing? Well, I certainly think so. I think it's sort of a bit... Um bit of a double-edged sword though absolutely it provides security and things like that but it also comes with pressure and expectation which I think is something that all players have to manage and, and again I, I feel really fortunate that I've played in a number of overseas leagues and and been the overseas pro and, and it is it's wonderful and the opportunities are awesome but there's a heck of a lot of pressure that comes with that and how to perform so I certainly hope that there's support wrapped around players like you mentioned you know that you can be absolute overnight superstars um, which is so exciting and I can't wait to see how it all pans out, but also to make sure that they're well supported, that at the end of the day, the game stays the same, cricket's still the same game played between bat and ball. So, yeah, it is. It's going to be a really exciting journey. And, and uh, as you said, you have played in, in uh, many, many overseas tournaments. But in terms of audience partnership or audience retention, India is, is second to none. Uh, but what do you think Women's Premier League can achieve or change it in terms of uh, women's cricket or, or the ecosystem that you guys are in at the Oh, I think if you look at the men's IPO, I think you've seen players being able to come on and perform at, at that stage and then have been able to transition into the international stage. And I think that's what's really exciting is there's so many domestic players there in India that haven't had the opportunity yet. And I think that's what is most exciting for me is, is to, well, it's exciting, but it's also very scary to think about how many players are going to get the opportunity to play at that next level. And I think that's not only going to help Indian cricket, that's going to help women's cricket globally which I think is really important as opportunities and um, yeah I just think 
these only benefits to, to this women's Premier League kicking off. And absolutely, let's let's now move to a fun session of a rapid fire uh, questions, and you got to be uh, very quick regarding these questions. Okay, uh, so my first one: uh, the most exciting young talents in young talent in women's cricket right now, according to you. Oh, that's tough. Um, <laughs> oh, if I, if I look close to home, I mean, Melly Kerr. I think Fran Jonas, Eden Carson are really exciting players. I think Alice Capsley mm-hmm. as well has been yep. a player. Grace Scrivens, obviously, in the Under 19 World Cup. It's gone really mm-hmm. well, Shafali. I mean, I've probably gone on a bit too long there, but there's plenty of young ones coming through. Absolutely. And, and uh, who do you think your prediction who will fetch the most money, the biggest bid in Women's Premier League auction? For, oh. Again, it's, it's really tough. I think there's so many quality players. You look at Nat Siva, Ash Gardner, Meg Lanning, mm-hmm. um, Elise, okay. Alyssa Healy, Elise mm-hmm. Perry. Uh, Susie Bates. I mean, I don't. I really don't know. Um, but again, I'm really excited to see, you know, those I guess auction battles go head to head. Absolutely. Five New Zealand players whom you are personally excited to watch in a Women's Premier League auction and how they do there. Oh, I certainly think Susie Bates, my old mate, will be right up yep. there. Merely clear. You know, I hope some of the I guess less known players also get an opportunity. I've mentioned Fran Jonas. I think left arm spinners are, are really valuable mm-hmm. in any right. form of cricket. <clears throat> Um, anyone really? I'd, I'd love to see as many Kiwis. Leah Tahuhu, Maddie Green. I think if we can get as many Kiwis in there as possible, would be great. I'll add a, another name there. Sophie Divine is some, uh, someone whom to look forward to in that option as well. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Uh, absolutely. And uh, one cricketer from the past, any country you would have loved to share the dressing room or the field with? Oh. Oh, there's probably a couple. I think uh, Rebecca mm-hmm. Rolls from New Zealand was a player that I wish she would have stayed around for another couple of years because I think T20, mm-hmm. she would have absolutely dominated. Um, if I look at across the ditch to Australia, I was fortunate enough to play a few games against Karen Rolton. Um, mm-hmm. But I think she's an absolute legend of the game. Belinda Clark as well is, is a player that I just think, you know, transformed the women's game. So absolute legends that, you know, I would have wished to have played a bit more against. Yeah, there's some interesting names there and I'm pretty sure if they they would have been around the corner there, they would have would have absolutely smashed T Twenty cricket. Uh, Sophie, your cricketing idol. I'm sometimes I'm a little bit embarrassed to say this, but I used to love Brett Lee growing up. Oh. Um, yeah, I used to love watching him bowl. You know, absolute rockets with the ball and being able to swing the ball was always someone that I tried to emulate growing up. And then I think you know a little bit later on, I, I mean, I love watching Brendan McCullum, Nathan Ellis. Um, mm. You know, again, there's so many players that I think are so great to watch in terms of how they take the game on. And uh, this this could be a bit of a controversial one, but your thoughts on Mankadi running out the non-strikers? <laughs> it is controversial. I think it's, it's part of the game. Um, I think, you know, if, if batters are taking an unfair advantage, then there needs to be a discussion. Um, personally, I think there needs to be, you know, warnings, and, and that's my own opinion on it. But absolutely, mm-hmm. I think... Every team, every player is going to go about it differently. But I think if, if a player is getting an unfair advantage, there needs to be a consequence to that. Yeah, that's a that's a clever answer, I would say. You have you have left left the ball pretty cleverly there. So, yeah. please, your all time women's T Twenty eleven, all time women's T Twenty eleven. Oh, far out! Jeez. Uh, <laughs> Everyone gives the same reaction to this question. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> put us on the spot a little bit there. Um, Oh, I think it's probably going to be dominated by Australians, um, unfortunately. But I think, you, you know, you look at the likes of Beth Mooney at the moment, Alyssa Healy, Elise Perry, Meg Lanning. Um, oh, geez. England, Nat Siver, I think. Sarah Taylor with the gloves. I think she's mm. one of the best going round. I still think Julian Goswami is, was one of the best bowlers. And, you know, the fact that she had such an incredible career for so long. Um you know, unbelievable. Uh, Smriti Mandana, I think, is, you know, one of the classiest batters going around. So, I mean, I'd, I'd love to have her in my team. Um, you look at Marazan Kat from South Africa, and, and she's just a genuine winner as well. Um, looks like my team's full of all-rounders, but um, oh, I think Deandra Dodden as well. You've got to have a player with her power. Um, you know, I've got to have my good mate Susie Bates in there too. Um not too sure what we're up to numbers wise yet. Ash Gardner, I think, is another great player that with the bat and ball. I think we really have completed it. I think yeah, we have so completed it. Not sure about the combination, but yes, plenty of all rounders <laughs> there. And 
and that's what you need in T20 cricket. You are you are well at that there. My last one, uh, Sophie. Your two favorites for the Women's T20 World Cup, and I want you to be unbiased here. Your two favorites for this Senior Women's T20 World Cup. Oh look, I think it's really hard to go past Australia. I think their current form and the depth that they've got, obviously being current holders as well of the, of the T20 World Cup, um, mm -hmm. are obviously going to be clear favourites. I think South Africa at home, I think are going to be a really tough side to beat. I think, you know, they've been there thereabouts the last couple of World Tournaments, and and mm -hmm. I feel like you play at home, you grow another arm and a leg. So, yeah, I think they're going to be a real threat at this tournament. And uh, one final one, uh, a message to all the fans who have been supporting women's cricket, women's sport and, and have been cheering on social media about the players, about how the matches are being, a message for them? Oh, firstly, thank you. I think um, we absolutely love the support and, and we love being able to play for you. And, and I think hopefully there's, there's a lot more to come. So make sure you get on board, switch on the TV, get on the internet, make sure you get in and support your favourite players because I know... Personally, I love to have that support from all over the world and it, um, you know, it makes games all the more special. Thank you so much, Sophie Divine. It was an absolute pleasure and all the best for the T20 World Cup. Awesome. Thank you very much for having me.